Ah, oh, so it's always super exciting to check out the rigs of the Tour Divide. I actually started doing the Rigs Of series in 2014 for bikepacker.com. Anyone remember that? Anyways, it continues today on bikepacking.com, and it's really just super exciting to see all these bikes uh, and the equipment used in these events. Some of them look brand new. Others have a little bit of patina, but one thing is certain, each is entirely unique, making this race fascinating year after year. So in today's video, I'm gonna unpack some trends that I found while looking through this year's flat bar and drop bar rigs. Let's do it. All right, so first of all, if you wanna check out these rigs, I have the links in the description below so that you can do so. There were 124 rigs submitted and I just wanna thank everyone that participated this year. I also wanna let everybody know that this video is partially supported by Terravel Tires. The Sparwood is Terravel's mixed terrain tire made for comfort and performance when covering long miles on pavement, gravel, and for service roads with a dash of single track, basically the tour divide. The tubeless ready Sparwood comes in a few sizes and variations. My favorite being the 29 by 2.2 inch durable casing. So for more on the Spirewood, make sure to hit this link right here, or you can also find a link in the description below. All right, so let's start with the bike type, as this is how we kind of separate our two uh, rigs of article. So we received 64 flat bar rigs and 60 drop bar rigs for 2023. There was a broad sampling of bikes in the flat bar and drop bar category. Among other brands, there were three Cannondales, three Surleys, four Specialized, four Atzos, four Chumbas, and seven Treks. But Salsa Cycles, again, takes the cake with six flat bar bikes and a whopping 26 drop bar bikes, totaling 32 bikes or 25% of the field. Cutthroats were by far the most popular bike with 22 folks riding them, followed by seven Salsa Fargos. If there's one thing that remains the same year after year after year, it's that the cutthroat, which was specifically designed for the Tour Divide, is still the most popular bike by leaps and bounds. So the number of riders using suspension was also a pretty interesting metric to look at. So of the 64 flat bar bikes, almost half of them had some sort of suspension fork, 33, whereas only 8% or 14 of the drop bar bikes had suspension forks. This is no surprise as stock hardtails usually come with suspension forks, whereas drop bar bikes tend to come with rigid forks. So there were also only three complete full suspension mountain bikes this year. And perhaps maybe a more interesting note, uh, two gravel specific forks were in the rigs that have very narrow tire clearance. All right, so those two bikes with the, the gravel suspension forks and two other rigs had tires at or under 45 millimeters. And then there were two other bikes that had 47 millimeter Terraval Rutlands. That's pretty narrow for a route that has a lot of chunky terrain. So I should mention that one of those bikes is this thing, Adrian's bike, a classic fixed gear rim brake bike um, from Super Vegan himself, uh, the third place 2008 finisher. And one of the riders in Ride the Divide, a film that has inspired so many of us. Uh, it's super great to see Adrian racing again. So generally speaking, folks tend to stick to two plus inch tires as that extra volume and grip definitely helps, but it's clear that everyone has their own preference. So we saw many 2.1, 2.2, and 2.35 inch tires, but one thing that stood out was the Victoria Mezcal Party. I'm testing a set right now and I really enjoy them, but I had no idea they turned into the tire of choice for the Tour de Vibe. There are 32 flat bar bikes running Mezcals and 31 drop bar bikes with them, making that 63 out of the 124 total rigs using Mezcals. That's over half of the bikes with the same tire pattern, which is pretty wild. There were also 22 bikes with Maxxis tires, most of those bikes running Maxxis icons, but there was also some Mezcal icon combo, which I always like to see. Another popular option was 14 Fleecer Ridge tires from Rene Ayres. Then there was a smattering of Terraval, WTB, Continental, and others. So all but 11 bikes were 29ers and the rest 27.5. And there were only two bikes with 29 by 3.0 plus tires. Even 2.6 inch tires were not very common. We only saw three of those. All right, so let's dive into drivetrains. So while not everyone shared their gearing, let's just get into some 
essential findings. So most bikes used a derailleur. In fact, every drop bar bike uh, that we published on our rigs of had a derailleur and gears. As for the flat bar bikes, there was more variation. So there's one pinion gearbox, two roll-off speed hubs, eight badass single speeders, and Adrian's fixed gear bike. One interesting finding was that 51 of the drop bar bikes were one bys, with only 10 two by drivetrains and one three by drivetrain in the mix. When I raced a while back, I did it with a 32 tooth chain ring with an 1142 cassette, as it was before 12 speed drivetrains. The climbing gear was fine, for the most part, but I was looking for more top end speed. And if I were to race again, I would definitely do some two by variation with a 46 tooth up front to accomplish that. All right, so a few other interesting notes on drivetrains. I counted 33 folks who are using SRAM access wireless drivetrains, two of which were using the new Eagle transmission. And to my surprise, I saw zero DI2 drivetrains, which is a shocker considering the limited battery life of one SRAM access battery versus a DI2 battery. For what it's worth, Mike Hall set the tour divide record on a DI2 drivetrain in 2016. Overall, SRAM was by far the most popular drivetrain with 77 folks using it. After that, 34 rigs had Shimano kits and there was one Sensa derailleur among the group. And one bike had a SRAM rear derailleur and a Campy front derailleur. Either way, it's wild to see SRAM become so popular, even though Shimano GRX was not necessarily designed for the Tour Divide, but definitely designed for dirt roads. So aero bars are always another popular talking point. Of the drop bar bikes, 54 used some sort of aero bar or, or bar rest. There were also 51 aero bars on flat bar bikes. That makes roughly 85% of riders using aero bars among the group. And when we talk about aero bars for events like this, it's not really to be aero, although it can help in times of high winds. It just creates another hand position. And from my experience, I can confirm that it's really enjoyable to get off your hands and put your weight on your forearms from time to time. So I would certainly go this route again. Bags are always an exciting part of these roundups too. And I love to see how many bikes have actually no true allegiances to one bag manufacturer. So out of the 124 bikes that were in our two rigs of articles, only 13 stuck to one brand. And roughly half of those folks were actually sponsored by the bike bag brand or had relationships with the brand. All right, so racks. 39 of the rigs in this bunch were actually using some sort of rack, with 29 of those racks being tailfin aero packs. There were also various racks from Tumbleweed, Old Man Mountain, and then a few other brands. Of the folks using racks, only six of them were actually using dropper posts with their racks, which is the primary reason I tend to use a rack these days. Seven more folks were using dropper posts with seat packs, making the total number of folks using dropper posts 13, which is Pretty slim. Also worth mentioning was that only two drop bar bikes came with droppers. That said, there were a bunch of suspension posts out there, 21 total, with 13 being of the Cane Creek variety and eight redshift posts. All right, so finally, let's talk about the people that make this event so incredible. So back in 2008, 17 individuals uh, started and only eight finished. This year, more than 280 folks signed up to race, maybe not necessarily actually getting to Banff and racing, including 27 women. And as I mentioned, 124 participating in our Rigs of article. So of those participants in our articles, there are folks from all over the world, but the top five countries are as follows. Three individuals each from France, the UK, Germany, and Belgium, five from Australia, eight from New Zealand, 21 from Canada, and 72 from the United States. So most of these folks from the United States are coming from Colorado, 10, California, 7, Minnesota, 6, Wisconsin, 4, and Oregon, 4. It's kind of cool to see the Midwest uh, representing there a little bit. All right, so maybe the best part of this is the age spread. So the top age group for, for our rigs of was in the 30s, with 36 participating, followed by the 40s. Uh, with 29 people participating. The 50s age group was next with 23 folks, and then the 60s with 21, followed by 20s at 15 and one 18-year-old participating. So the next time you tell yourself you're too old to participate, look at these numbers. It's pretty great to see that there are folks out pushing themselves at all ages. And I did see those 60-year-old uh, age group numbers. There were some upper 60s in there. 
really great to see. All right, so that's it for this year. That was pretty fun. I'd love to hear from you all about what stat kind of stood out to you the most. So let me know in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button and consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. Support from our members sustains this channel and everything we do at bikepacking.com. The Collective has a lot of perks, including the twice annual Bikepacking Journal, monthly giveaways, just to name a few. So for more details, you can click on the card in the top right corner or also find a link in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.